Go for it. All right, so in terms of connected masses, the first problem in your homework, you had a massless, frictionless pulley. How wonderful. And you had some mass sitting on a flat table connected to another mass, uh, which was hanging. Um, and they were connected by a classic massless, stretchless uh, string. So this string really doesn't come into play other than to connect them. And the fact that this pulley is fixed, uh, the thread simply passes over the pulley. There's no friction here. We're not turning the pulley, so we're not losing any energy that way. So the point is that the tension anywhere along this string is identical. I would simply call it T. Now if you look, if, if you're wanting to solve for the acceleration of the system, say you know M1 and M2, let's say there's no friction yet, um, and you don't know the tension either, so you want to find the acceleration. So you do some free body diagrams. If you look at the uh, mass 1, all you have going on is tension pulling it. You do have the weight of the mass, which is supported by the table. So if you had friction, well, we could simply include that as well. Let me get a nice red pen over here. And uh, whew, friction would be going that way, if there were friction. Uh, let's save that. That's problem number two. So all we have going on is tension pulling in the direction of the acceleration, and it's pulling uh, M1, and that would be M1's acceleration. Now, the fact that these this string doesn't stretch means M1 and M2 are also moving with the same rate of acceleration. And what happens with M2 is you've got, for a free body diagram, the weight of M2, and uh, the only reason M2 doesn't accelerate at a rate of A, or a rate of G downwards, is because you've got that tensional force uh, pulling back on it. So M2G minus the tension will tell you M2's acceleration. So what you've got here, if you know M1 and M2, uh, you've got a two equation, two unknown, T and A problem. You don't know T, you don't know A. Now I don't care what T is right now, as long as it's um, a strong enough string to support the tension, then great. All we might care about is A. So if I add the left hand sides of the equations, yay, uh, T goes away. And likewise, adding up the right sides of the equations, we've got uh, the sum of the masses uh, times acceleration. So acceleration ends up being simply this right here. And um, it's nice to put it in this form. Uh, here's the multiplier of gravity. This form is very nice because we can check the limiting cases to see if we've done things correctly. And I, what I mean by that is if M2 were uh, insignificant compared to the mass of M1, or M2, I'm sorry, if M1 were extremely small and M2 were big, uh, the system would basically accelerate at a rate of G. It's almost like cutting, you could even cut the string. Of course, then there'd be no M1, and A would equal G for M2. Yay. Now, on the other hand, if M2 were very, very small and M1 were uh, big, then you'd have a very, very small number. So the system would move, but if M2 were sufficiently small, the system would move at a snail's pace. But it would move. Now, the only thing that might keep it from moving is friction which I've put here. Now we uh, typically model friction as uh, the coefficient of friction times the normal force. Now the normal force from the force body diagram on M1 is simply the weight of M1 because that's a horizontal table. So when you put friction into this set of equations, it'll simply modify them in this way. There's your tension 
fighting friction, accelerating M1, and you'll end up simply getting mu M1. I hope you can read that. Uh, here, I'll just make it a little neater. Times gravity. This will be the only modification to uh, the problem. Uh, for number two, you have, you've got friction going on between M1 and the table. For uh, problem number one, I set, I set up a problem for you without any friction at all. So there you go.